he wowed at the Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference with it, but we're still not quite sure what it is. Welcome to Skywatch TV for Thursday, July 28th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. And by the way, I know I said yesterday was Thursday. I was wrong. Today is Thursday. Anyway, our guests joining us, the uh, producers, the host and director of the Watchers DVD series, most recently Watchers 10 DNA, in which they unveiled something startling, which they disclosed for the first time at the Rocky Mountain Prophecy Conference. We welcome Richard Shaw and L.A. Marzulli to the program. Gentlemen, welcome. Great to be here. Hey, Derek, good to see you again. Uh, Richard, you uh, released the video, or well, the two of you released a video to YouTube last week of the so-called fairy. This is an excerpt from the Watchers 10 DVD. I'm going right. to show this on the screen while we're talking about it, just a clip there of the uh, brief examination of what this thing is. What, what is this thing? Do you have any idea? Well, uh, when Jaime showed it to us, now we, we saw it for the first time three years ago in his office, and I, L.A. has kind of told that story before, but basically he brings this bottle, about a quart-sized bottle of formaldehyde, and sets it on his desk and then leaves it with us to look at. And inside of it was this creature with wings, hands, arms, a tail with a stinger on it, and legs and feet. I mean, it's and when I looked at it, you know, Ellie and I looked at each other and I said, could this be a fairy? Now, the only reason we call it a fairy is because uh, this goes way back to our research in Watchers 1, where uh, L.A. brought a woman on that had had an encounter with these creatures at a, a, a place in uh, Central California. So that's what she called it and that's what her friends all called it. So that it kind of got tagged as a fairy. Uh, we don't know uh, if if this is the same thing she saw, but it's she sure describes it in that way, where it seems to have like a, a face and a and wings and a tail like a scorpion, and this is something that to us it seems very similar to what's described in Revelation chapter nine, what right. happens in the end of days. I mean, almost to a T. You know, as far as having a crown of gold and all that, I didn't see that, but also we're looking at a dead creature that's been soaking in formaldehyde for, for, you know, a decade. So we don't know what it looked like when it was alive. And, and of course, you know, some of the descriptions that the, the, the Bible characters would give things it was, well, it's like this. It looked like, a, you know, wasn't a physical crown or anything like that. But uh, so we don't know if it had hair on its head, but it does have little fuzzy stuff on its body, which I thought was kind of interesting. And, it, and most recently, you know, I realized we had never really talked about the tail sec section in it. And I found a new piece of video the other day and did a screenshot of it and sent it to L.A. And I said, I think this is a stinger, hmm. which would then pretty much fulfill the whole Revelation description. Hmm. Now, L.A., how close did you get to this thing during the uh, in examination well, I mean, Rick, Rick was kind of talking about it. Uh, you you got to understand that, you know, I, I had never met Jaime. Richard met him briefly at a UFO thing with Dr. Roger Lear. And so we're in his office, and, you know, it's like a four-story nondescript building in Mexico City. And, and we, we're down in the lobby, and all of a sudden Jaime appears on the railing with a couple of A's, and Marzulli, Shaw, and up we go uh, to his office. And he's, he's got to shoot a program uh, on, on the top story. So he goes, I, I'll be back in like an hour or 45 minutes. Make yourself at home. So we're in this guy's office, and he reaches behind him, and he opens up a cabinet door, and he takes out this jar, and he sets the jar down on his desk, and he goes, okay, I'll see you later. And he just walks out, and he bounds out of the room. <laughs> and we're sitting there just going like, you have got to be kidding. I mean, we have no fly. And, he, you know, he sets the wing nightmare, which is my name for it, on the desk. And we're just we, – we can't believe it, okay? We can't believe what we're looking at. Later on in the day, Ricardo came, and they took the creature out and got an x-ray. And at that point, we were like, you know. Yeah, like, we actually got to see the creature the lifted out of this yeah. bottle of stuff. He took I mean, some tongs was, and lifted it out. So I'm there with my camera, you know, trying to get any shot of it that I can while he's we doing were it. six inches away from the thing. And the first, Derek, when I, when I first saw it, the first thing that popped into my head and I've heard other people say exactly the same thing when they say it. Revelation 9. Yeah. That's where everybody goes. And I just want to show you guys real briefly the x-ray here. <laughs> and well, those I, are, could, 
I can send him those pictures. Yeah, we will. I just, you know, it's just always show and tell time. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it, it's it's gone viral. We've had over 233,000 hits in like five days since we put the YouTube up. Um, it was just on Spirit Daily this morning, which was really cool. Uh, Charisma News did it. And, you know, it, what, what's great about this, look, it, it's people go, oh, it's you're just money, money, money. We're, we're in it for the money and all this nonsense. I mean, hello, this is hardcore scientific research. When we saw it, we weren't sure whether it was real. In fact, when I got the x-rays, I started really leaning towards hoax. Mm -hmm. When we were down there looking at it, I felt like it was real because we were looking at this thing and it didn't look like someone stapled it together or glued it together. It really yeah, looked like... There are people it. doing that, too. Yeah. yeah. And we know and about were. that. But when they got the x-rays and we saw these hot little dots in this thing, you know, and you, you can see them right there, I just started going, well, maybe that's how they put the thing together. Mm -hmm. It didn't make any sense because, as Rick, Rick pointed out, they're so asymmetrical. It's just... It, it didn't make any sense. And until I went and spoke to a veterinarian who, of course, like many people in Watchers 10, will not come on the record, will not, doesn't want his face showed or where he works or anything else. <laughs> Can't do that, LA. They'll come and arrest me. So, um, you know, but he, we did get the audio. Prosper. Yeah, <laughs> live long and prosper. <laughs> you know, we, we did get the audio, and that is in Watchers 10. And, you know, without spilling the beans, when he told me what, what it was, that's when I just went, oh, my gosh. And it, it blew both of us away. It solved the puzzle. Yeah. It solved the mystery for us. And it's like turning a light bulb on. It's like, well, if, if the thing was shot by a gun, then that means that if you, if you created a hoax and then you laid it on the ground and shot it to make it look, I mean, that's crazy. I don't think anyone that's would spend stupid. that much time putting something that delicate together and then shoot it with a, with a gun. So someone shot it down, and, and that's how this 13-year-old kid found it. And here's something else to consider. When I was in Colorado, I had two hunters come up, you know, independently of each other. Mm -hmm. So one guy comes up and gives me, looks at the x-rays and tells me something. Another hunter, the same day, maybe an hour or two later, comes up, and basically we have the same conversation. Both of these guys looked at the x-rays. They go, how big was it? I said, about nine inches. So, you know, the x-ray is the a, little, a little bigger than, than what, what the creature actually was. And I said about nine inches. <laughs> Rick's guy goes, that's bad production value. Well, let me stop it. <laughs> so <laughs> always the director. Sorry. But they both, <laughs> didn't say anything. they both said to me that this was number seven bird shot and that this creature was shot between 50 and 75 feet away. Both of them said the same thing. Really? They, they were able to... Identify it that clearly. Instantly, instantly. Oh, that's number seven bird shot. Huh. It, well, was, I, there was a comment on your on the the website this morning on the YouTube site where some guy said, Oh, those are the screws holding it together. And I said, <laughs> Not true. <laughs> I said, first of all, we're looking at two angles, and these are x-rays. So if yeah. it were a screw in in like either the profile view or the up front, you'd see the threads and the head of the screw and all right. that. There is no such thing. They look they're spherical from any angle. So the uh, the composition of the what appears to be the biological material have there been what kind of testing has been done on that so far? Uh, well, the first test, uh, I, I guess Jaime and uh, Ricardo had done a DNA test in which they couldn't get any DNA from it. But yet, at dinner one night, now this was like oh a year and a half ago Jaime was in Los Angeles and I went to dinner with him LA wasn't wasn't in town at the time and we started talking about the ferry and, and this is when I asked him I said look we'd like to release this because we think this is really stunning information and he was real hesitant because he still didn't know what it was and he was he's a very cautious guy a lot of people say Jaime's a hoaxer or, you know mm -hmm. he's oh, not sensationalist and yeah no he's not he's he's very much like we are, we're trying to find out the truth about these things, and we're not always right. We don't always know because this is stuff no one's ever seen before. So he he said that they had done some kind of a DNA test, and part of the part of the DNA came back as DNA from a bird, hmm. which was really interesting. Now they couldn't get nuclear DNA from it, and I don't know. Maybe it hadn't soaked long enough in formaldehyde at that point to make the test invalid because that's the problem we had with it. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah. they had told us uh, 
uh, LA's connections to one of the labs that tested it said that normally if it's if something's been in formaldehyde, it cooks the DNA, they said. Yeah. So but yet he's got another lab that says they might be able to now that they know that, they can compensate for it. So Maybe. that's what we're hoping to do. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. So at this point, um, it's just still guess as to what this thing is. Yeah, I mean it's it's yeah. a it's a real creature. I mean, I, I at this point, and there was a second one that uh, L.A. mentioned uh, has mentioned before that uh, Jaime brought out, and it was like in a little cardboard box with like sitting on like cotton, and it was very similar to this. But we all looked at it up close, and it was owned by someone else, so I couldn't really photograph it. We didn't have the rights to to use it in anything, just to even show a comparison. But, but it looked different. It looked different. I yeah. I thought there were elements to it, didn't you, L.A., that looked fake? Yeah. Like its feet looked uh, like plastic to me. immediately towards hoax when we saw that one, immediately. Hmm. This other one is a whole different deal. I mean, it's the facial expression, detailed. Eric, uh, is just is off the charts, really strange. Hmm. Uh, you know, yeah, and then when you see the x-ray and you examine, well, one thing, when, when we finally got to see the x-ray again after three years, this was just recently... Yeah, uh, as I was as I was finishing Watchers Ten, the X-rays came in, and I looked at the the profile view of the cranial area, the skull, and you'll notice like in the back of the skull there was like all of this tissue. Uh, it, 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 I mean, when you look at that, you go, you can't fake that. That's like real. That's a real skull. Hmm. And and you know when I went to the veterinarian, I kept bringing him back. You know, and, and you know this as as a as an interviewer. You know, I mean, you just you bring people back and, and you just, well, maybe he'll tell me the story a little different. Maybe he's not sure. Maybe he's leaving out something. And I kept bringing him back to the thing. Look, are you sure it's not a composite? And he just would look at me and goes, you know, if, it, if it's a hoax, if somebody made this thing from another creature or a group of creatures or whatever, it's really, really good. And it begs the question, you know, if someone's doing this, then, you know, they're they're doing it to put it on the cover of, you know, Esquire or something, right? And that's not the case. This thing is just, nobody made any money from it. I mean, the kid made, according to Jaime, I mean, they, he gave him something to, 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 you know, buy the creature. Mm -hmm. But it's not like it's, this is the first time it's really gone, you know, out. And, okay, so we're selling some DVDs. That's great. But we're not, I mean, people are just hysterical. Some of the nasty little comments you get on YouTube. Yeah. You know, what, what, yeah. we, we, we <laughs> go really to the veterinarian and we, we, we spend the money, and I won't tell you how much it is, but it's in the thousands to do DNA testing on this thing, and we didn't get anything. Um, you know, so we're, we're and right now, the x-rays, they're at a forensic anthropologist's office. They're also at one of the leading radiologist's office, and we're waiting to get feedback from them. So it's like, you know, we're, we're on the trail. We're, we're trying to, um, look. Let me go back to something here. In the Book of Enoch, it tells us that, and I get it, it's not part of the, the canon, I, you know, so we don't have to go down that rabbit trail. But the mm -hmm. bottom line is this. The Book of Enoch does tell us that the angels who fell from their first estate, Jude, right, when they came down, they sinned not only against the human beings, but against the animals. Right. And Tom Horn's gotten in this whole deal about the chimeras, you know, Horn and Putman and, and, and all, and, and yourself, the whole idea of chimeras. I think that's what we're looking at. I think the fallen cherub, i.e. Satan, somehow has access to the gene pool. Somehow he can we have access to it for crying oh, yeah, out. Yeah, that's like Tom Horn and Chris's yeah. uh, DVD in human. Mm -hmm. I mean it, it gets into some of that stuff, not specifically what we have here, I don't think, but but there is DNA manipulation going on. This was the a hallmark of the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. And and I guess also there's there's this misconception when we refer to the Nephilim, it, it's not just about giants. That's kind of like a, I a mean, signature. LA, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I mean, the these signatures. These were beings that were messing around with humanity. Right. Like, and I and I would add to that they were trying to create man in his own image. That's what he's trying to do. So and you hear something else interesting to think about. You know, it talks about the creature. You know, breastplates like this and the helmet. Well, that thing, maybe that's when it's dressed for battle in Revelation 9. Mm -hmm. This thing wasn't dressed for battle. Maybe it was a spy. You know, I, I mean, we have, I mean, the conjecture is endless. I have no idea it's what very this weird. Is, but it, it's, it's real in our opinion. 
Yeah. I mentioned on, on the radio the other night when we were being interviewed that uh, imagine seeing one of these beings wow. flying towards you with a human-looking face scowling at you as it's ready to sting you. I yeah. mean, that would be pretty creepy. There was yeah. a guy, there was a man who, who emailed me after he saw this. This week, he emailed me. And he thanked me for, you know, the film, thanked us for the film and getting this out and putting it putting the picture up because now he realizes he's not crazy. And basically what <laughs> happened was one night and he's a Christian. He had been praying to the Lord and he finished this, this prayer time and he, and he went into uh, the bathroom and flicked on the light. And there's this thing clinging to the screen hmm. looking right at him. Mm -hmm. He said it completely freaked him out. He thought he was losing his mind. Yeah. So, you know, now we've got, did he say it had like a human-looking face? Did he mention that? To you? He said it looked exactly like the thing that you showed. Wow! Wow! That would really freak you out. Yeah, no it's kidding. Miniature creature mm -hmm. looking at you through the through the through the window. Yeah. Well, it's wow. it's fascinating stuff. We appreciate the uh, the work and the risk that you guys are taking, both personally and professionally, <laughs> uh, because we know that you're catching a lot of flack and criticism from others in ministry as well as from the secular world. So um, this is true. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate, appreciate you guys putting yourself out there. And, and please keep us posted. Cosmic punching bags. That's what we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we look yeah. forward to seeing you guys again. Thanks very much. Thanks, Derek. Thank you, Derek. What was the old saying from the uh, Shakespeare play? There is more in heaven and earth that is dreamt of in the, our philosophy. That is true. We Christians say we believe in a supernatural God who spoke the universe into, into existence and yet uh, tend to de-supernaturalize even the supernatural conflict that is clearly in the Bible. And then when you get into weird stuff like this, it's, uh, well, that's just right out. We don't know what this thing is. It does appear from my look at the uh, x-rays that I saw out there at the Rocky Mountain Prophecy Conference that if this is a hoax, this is a professional grade hoax. We're talking Hollywood grade hoax, except that it was brought to the Mexican broadcaster Jaime Mossan by a young teen boy who says he found it by the side of the road. So what is the truth here? Think what you will of uh, L.A. Marzulli and Richard Shaw. They are working to try to get the truth. And again, catching an awful lot of flack, including some friendly fire. It is uh, definitely strange times, and uh, has been for quite some time, in fact. Steve Quayle talks about that on Skywatch TV this week. It's part two of our discussion of his new book, Empire Beneath the Ice, in which he explains why the Nazis didn't actually lose World War II. And he talks about their secret uh, base at Antarctica and what they might have been doing there. The program, if you haven't seen it yet this week, will be broadcast, that is, Saturday, 3.30 p.m. Central Time on the Victory Television Network. Those are our friends down there in Arkansas and around Memphis. And then Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. at uh, WCLF Television in the Tampa St. Petersburg area. The program is available now at the Skywatch TV channel on Roku and also the Skywatch TV channel on Vimeo. Our web exclusive content is available for you each and every week. Today and every Thursday, you'll see the new episodes of Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck and his wife, Christina Peck. They take a look at the creation down at the nanoparticulate level. We're talking quarks, bosons, and other interesting particles, but they do it from a biblical perspective. And uh, then every Friday, Sci Friday with my best friend and our science editor, Sharon K. Gilbert. That plus these daily news updates, Skywatch Women and more available at skywatchtv.com and the Skywatch TV channel on Roku. Do subscribe if you've got a Roku account and you haven't yet. Make sure you add us to your favorites so that we're right there on your Roku selections when you bring up that uh, set-top box. We also have a portable version, an audio version of everything that we do, audio versions of everything we do at Skywatch TV at the Skywatch TV podcast. You'll find that uh, available at the Skywatch TV website. Uh, also, information on how you can automatically add it to your favorite podcatcher like iTunes. Um, look at uh, skywatchtv.com and then click the link in the top menu bar that says podcast. Your support keeps us going and brings this uh, cutting-edge information to you. And uh, during the month of July, as a thank you for your support, we're offering these books related to the spiritual war we are fighting, empowered by his presence, and 50 things you should know about Satan and demons. We'll send those to you if you're a U.S. resident for your gift of any amount during the month of July, while supplies last. 
For information and to donate, log on to skywatchtv.com slash donate. And of course, your mouse finger is a great help to us too. Just click like, click share, click subscribe, wherever you find us on the interwebs. And if you have questions, comments, or suggestions for us, please send those to dgilbert at skywatchtv.com. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. Tomorrow, Sci Friday. Until then, I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. America isn't the same country that we grew up in, but it's hard to get back what we've forgotten we had. That's why Defender Publishing presents When Once We Were a Nation. 12 chapters, 12 authors, each one remembering when once we were a nation of strength, of rugged individualism, of dreams and opportunity, when once we were a nation of faith. From authors like Tom Horn, Chris Putnam, Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis, Sheila Zielinski, and more. And when you order a copy of the new book, When Once We Were a Nation from Skywatch TV, we'll add these books free. Dancing with the Devil, An Honest Look at the Occult. Culture Clash, Islam's War with America. Conspiracies in the Cross, How to Refute the Most Popular Attacks on the Gospel. And God Bless America by Todd Starnes of Fox News. When Once We Were a Nation from Defender Publishing, because the first step to getting it back is remembering what we had.